Hey everybody, today Rado runs through the Manhattan Project and its expansion, the second stage. And for those of you who are just curious about how the base game works, don't worry, you can watch this video. I'll definitely point out all the spots where I'm doing expansion stuff, so you'll still have a good understanding of what the base game plays like without the expansion. And if you're interested in the expansion, don't worry, I'll definitely try to use all the features that are in the expansion so you can see how it adds to the core game. And what is the core game? Well, it's all about building the bomb. Each player plays a nation on the world stage, hell on building the most powerful, destructive nuclear devices the world has ever seen. Why? To score points, of course. And so let's start doing that. Let's see now. This is my starter board. I am the green player. I start with four green laborer grunts, 10 bucks, one bomber and one fighter. You can see on this little chart. And in this game, I will be North Korea, who has a special power of basically kind of holding the world hostage. And if I have a scientist in yellow cake, I can do that to do my special power. Jen, meanwhile, she is the Soviet Union, which means she has extra access to espionage because Soviet spies are everywhere. And she starts with two additional bucks. Now, before I go any farther, I should say this is the first thing that is an expansion. If you're playing the base game, nobody gets to have a country with a special ability. Everybody starts without that. There are no countries with special abilities. So right off the bat, the expansion is very, very cool because there's a bunch. First of all, there's been a promo that had several countries, and then there's a bunch more that came with the full expansion. So there's a bunch of starting powers everybody can have that really makes the game feel very different and unique, but certainly not necessary. The game plays just fine without them with everybody just having base abilities. But anyway, so Gen Soviet Union, I'm North Korea. Now let's start playing. How do you play? This is a worker placement game. Every turn you do one of two things. You either place your workers, and you can place as many as you can on your turn, or you retrieve your workers, and that's when you retrieve all your workers. You do one or the other all throughout the whole game. Let's start doing that. Worker placement. I'm first player. I got a worker. I would like to place him. And let's see, I, I can't place him anywhere on my own board because the only building I've got, or not building, my country, I could place a scientist here. I don't have any scientists yet. Which means, well, I think I will go ahead and get a scientist. So I move my little dude here and put him in the university. And what that means is I basically recruited a scientist from the local university. Now, I have the scientist. He's usable right now. If I wanted to, I could use him on my North Korea thing, but I still need yellow cake. I don't have yellow cake yet. So I'm gonna have to get some of that first before I can use my country's special ability. But anyway, that's all the placement I can do. You can say, hey, but there's all these other places up there. Why don't you place another thing? There's really only one rule about worker placement in this game. Every turn when you're doing worker placement, first, you have the option of putting one worker on the main board, and you can never put more than one worker on the main board. Then, after that, you can put as many workers as you want on your own board. And that's how it works. So, I've already placed my one worker out there. I can't place any more because I can't do anything down here. And so now it's Jen's turn. I think Jen, she's going to go to the university too, and she's going to grab a, what do you call it, a engineer. So she's just hired a little purple engineer. And you can, the, the iconography is very, very clear. You put a guy here, and you get this ability. Doesn't matter who I put here, this is what I get. But some of them have restrictions. Like over here, I have to put an engineer in this spot. Over here, I have to put a scientist, and plus I have to give up two yellow cake to activate this spot, and so on. So that's all pretty straightforward. Now Jen's in the same spot as me. She'd like to place more, but she can't because she's already done her one on the board. So now it's back to me, back to my turn. And let's see here. Well, I think I am going to, yeah, I'm gonna come up here and do some construction. So I've sent another one of my laborers, and so this will be the only action I can do on the main board to do construction. What the construction is, is building one of these buildings. And these are all starter buildings, randomly laid out, but these you always have these starter buildings, and then more and more buildings that are much, much better come out over the course of the game. So I am going to spay, spay, pay three bucks to get a factory, because you can see this factory is in the space where I have to pay three bucks. Alternatively, if I had an engineer and sent him here, I would be able to get this building for nothing. But I don't have an engineer, I have a scientist. So I'm, I'm taking this factory, it's available. And now the interesting thing is, I now have a building of my own and I can use it immediately. I, I, whenever you do anything up there, you, whenever you do any action, you immediately get the results. So I've got a building, it's still my turn. I've placed my one worker on the main building. Now I'm gonna place a worker down here. I'm gonna place one of my other grunts over here and I see I need one. It could have been anything, but I put in my grunt. And now I can either get another bomber or I can get two bucks. Since I just paid three bucks for that, I'm gonna get two bucks. And so really that kind of offset the cost of this, this bomber factory of mine. Okay, now uh, this is so often the case in these sorts of games when you get a card, all the other ones slide down. 
and new ones come out. Okay, now it's Jen's turn again. She is gonna follow suit. She's gonna send her engineer that she just recruited over here. And that means she can get this one or this one for free. And she's gonna take this university because normally it would cost her three bucks like I had to pay, but she gets it for free. Boop, ah. And this is a place where she can hire scientists. And I was like really bummed. I wanted to get that, but I wasn't really thinking very clearly. And like me, Jen, she's got more workers, so she'll go on ahead and use this. And with this worker, she went to a local university and hired her own scientist. Okay, and then again, stuff slides down. So you get a sense of just how simple and easy this game is. But hold on, it'll get much more rich and complex as I start to get more and more buildings. Okay, back to my turn. Now I've, I've got two more works left. I've got a scientist and a, another schlubby worker. Hmm, okie doke. I will, oh. See, but now, I missed out my chance at university, but a, a, a very cool mine has shown up, but I have to spend three more bucks. It's pretty expensive, and I don't have an engineer. Instead, I could send this guy, I could send this guy, hmm, let's see. Oh, whoops, yeah. See, I could send this guy down here, pay three bucks, because I didn't, the free ones are gone, and get an engineer, and then on the next turn, I could use an engineer to get this for free. But in the meantime, Jen's got a lot more money, so I might not get a chance to get that built. Let's see here. So, and remember my special ability, I need yellow cake along with my scientist. And I've still got my scientist. So I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna place my last guy, I'm gonna send him, since I don't have my own mine, I'm not gonna buy one of these mines. I'm gonna send him to the local mines. So look over here, I can send him to this mine, which cost me five bucks to go here, but I'd get four yellow cake. I could go to this mine, which I need an engineer, which I don't have, so I can't go to that one. So I'm gonna go to this one, the one I can actually go to. And I get three yellow cake, one, two, three. Mmm, yellow cake. But every, this symbol means everybody else in the game gets one. So I've just given one to Jim. All right, and now I've still got one more worker, but I've got no play. Oh, yes, I do. And so now I've, I've done my one placement up on the big board. I am now going to use my scientist and place him on North Korea on, on my special power. And remember, again, without the expansion, you don't have these special powers. And I have to use a yellow cake and a scientist. And now my special power is after I activate this card, I tell the other players... Hey, um, I'm going to generate for myself some uranium or plutonium. It's my choice. Uh, nobody knows what I'm going to generate. But if players don't want me to do that, they don't want me to get uranium or plutonium, they can pay me three bucks. And with more players, you know, they can spread them out. So everybody puts in one dollar or something like that. But now Jen's all by herself. Does she want to pay three bucks to prevent me from getting plutonium or uranium? No, she does not. She has enough money. She could afford it. But she's going to let it go. And so I will take some plutonium, and I'm on the plutonium board. Now normally to get plutonium, it takes a scientist and two yellow cake to come over here. But my special ability basically lets me do it for a scientist and one yellow cake. All right, and I've got nobody else to place, so that's the end of my turn. Jen's turn, and she's still got three workers, so she's still going. Let's see, I think she is gonna get herself another building. So she sends up here to contracting it. Many people as you want, there's no limits on construction. Everything else is limited, but construction is many people can go there as they want. Jen is going to pay $3 of her significant amount of money to grab this very nice mine. It comes over here, and then everything else slides down. And still her turn. So if she wants, she could place both this scientist and this worker in this mine. But you know what, waste, that's kind of a waste of a scientist. She doesn't really necessarily want to use a scientist for that when the scientist can do other cool stuff too. Um, but anyway, so, so she's not gonna use the mine she just got because she'd really like to have another worker before doing that. So but anyways, that's the, so she's already done her one up there. She's not gonna place any more down here. Again, she could, you two used to guys do her, her espionage, but unfortunately all my buildings are taken. Espionage lets her put her workers on my space, so she couldn't do that either. She's gonna be done. Even though she could do some more action, she's done. Now it's back to my turn. I have no more workers, so I cannot place any workers. Therefore, I must retrieve workers. And when you do that, you basically take all your workers from your own buildings and from the board. They all become available in the following turn. So my whole turn is basically spent retrieving my little workforce of four grunts and a scientist. And, and that's it, that's my whole turn. But in the expansion, there is the addition of these notable figures of history, you know, Oppenheimer and 
well, he's the only one whose name I really knew, but you know, Curtis LeMay and Leslie Groves, and they all have special powers and whatnot. They, you know, these two guys specialize. This one lets me do espionage actions for free. This one lets me block espionage. I might want to take this one before Jen starts espionaging me. Yeah. Oh, okay. Or, you know, these guys let me use my regular workers as scientists or engineers, or they also let me use regular engineers and scientists as double engineers and scientists. This guy lets me be much more effective in creating plutonium and uranium on the board. This guy lets me control, lets me like get rid of excess, uh, excess cards from the board so I get a little more control. And this one ups my military might significantly, give me one free attack as well if I want. Let's see, and I think, since I have no engineers yet, I'm going to take the guy who lets me create my, turn my grunts into engineers. And so I've got a new special ability. That was my whole turn. And again, remember, you, these guys don't exist without the expansion. So these extra special abilities I get from my country and from the, you know, uh, the figure from history that I've got is unique to the expansion. So that was my turn. Now it's Jen's turn again. And she's got two workers. Let's see here. What's she going to do? I think for starters, she's going to place her last grunt over here in this other spot of the university. And you know, when she placed one here, she was able to get a engineer. Remember when I placed one here, so she could place it over here and get herself a scientist, but instead, she is gonna place it here and hire more laborers, you know, which is, these guys are laborers. Now, we come over here, there are no more green, purple laborers for Jen to hire. She can never get any more purple laborers. So whenever you get, do a university action to get more, if there are none in your color that you can hire as a permanent worker who will join your workforce for the rest of the game, you can instead hire these temporary contractors. So Jen is basically hiring three, oops, one, two, three, temporary contractors who will she'll only have for a little while and they'll go away. Now that was her one placement on the board, but remember she can do additional placements. So she will also place two of these guys she just got in her mind that she made to, oh no, will she? Hmm, no she won't. Oh, she's gonna be very mean. She's going to place two guys over here in her Soviet Union power. What her Soviet Union power does, when she activates it by using two guys, use espionage on a single opponent building at any time this turn, follow the normal rules for espionage. Normally do espionage, you gotta come over here, put a worker over here and pay three bucks. It's very expensive to do espionage. Jen can do, but, but, you know, but it only takes one worker. For Jen, it takes two workers and no, um, what do you call it? You know, uh, no money, and it means she can do it in addition to, you know, if, if normally espionage is your only board action in a turn, but she can still do a core board action in espionage. So anyway, she's doing espionage. She's activated espionage. She will take this other temporary worker that she got, and she will put it over here. She will espionage and put him in my factory, where she will get the benefit of either a bomber or two bucks. And she want a bomber or two bucks. She'll go on ahead and take the two bucks. Oops, not the five bucks, the two bucks. And so basically she has blocked up my building through an act of espionage. And now, I, even though I've got all my workers and I'm ready to go and work in my factory, I can't because there's this schlub and I will not be able to get rid of him until I do the retrieve worker action. So anyway, our interactiveness. Jen has done some espionage. Now, now remember, normally espionage is a bit more spendy because you have to use your main action and you have to pay three bucks, but Jen's special power let her do that. So anyway, back to my turn. Can't use my factory like I was planning to. That really sucks, but Really, really sucks, actually. Let's see here. I think I will send a laborer. Hmm. I got my scientist and my laborer. And I could. Let's see. Well, I, I can, I'll probably do this, the uh, North Korea thing again. But before I do that, I have to do my main, you always have to do your main board action first if you're gonna do one. So I've got four plain workers, what am I gonna do? Now if I wanted, I could return the favor. You know, Jen just hit me by blocking, um, you know, by, by doing espionage. If I wanted, I could send this little guy up here and do an airstrike. And that'd be my main action. What an airstrike does, it means I can attack, well, any player, but in this case, only Jen, with my fighters and my bombers. And what I would do is, I would send my fighter over to shoot down Jen's fighter. She would lose a fighter, and I'd lose a fighter in the, in the same process. And then I would use my bomber to blow up Jen's mine. And, yeah, what the heck? I wanna demonstrate everything for you? I'm gonna do an airstrike. So, 
it, when, you, when you do an airstrike, it's your choice. And, you know, say I had like I'd gotten a lot more in my military. I had six fighters and four. I could send as many jets as I want. I could send like three jets and two bombers or whatever. You know, it, it's variable up to you. But I, I have one and one. I'm going to send both of them. First, I'll send my jet, and oh, it comes over here. Now, jets can be used only to destroy your opponent's aircraft. So I can use this jet to either destroy Jen's jet or you know fighter, I should say, not jet, or Jen's fighter or Jen's bomber. And I'm going to use it to de destroy Jen's fighter. So her fighters have gone down to zero. So did mine. I had to spend my fighter basically to get rid of Jen's fighter. Now the reason I got rid of Jen's fighter instead of Jen's bomber is this. Now I'm going to send my bomber over. And, and it does, because I've sent one bomber, it does, boom, one point of damage on Jen's mine that she got last round. This mine is no longer usable. I could have bombed her university as well, even though there's a guy here. The guy wouldn't die, but it's, the university could not be used anymore. But I'm going to bomb her mine. So, you know, she sent one of mine to the hospital. I sent one of hers to the morgue, as it were, because that's the Chicago way. So. Now, uh, Jen has basically lost the use of her mine until she repairs it. You notice there is a repair space up here on the board that costs $5. So that's an example of the interactivity of the game. Normally, Jen and I, we don't play that mean, but I just wanted to show you how this stuff works. Anyway, but I'm sorry, uh, that, that was the beginning of my turn. The beginning of my turn was I did my core board action, and now I get to do my other actions down here, and I'm going to do my North Korea action. I place a scientist, use a yellow cake, and I say to the world, give me money, or I will make more fissionable materials. And Jen, well, she might have given me money. She doesn't want me to pull too far ahead of the plutonium and uranium because that's what we need to build these bombs and that's how you score points. She might have given me three bucks, but now she needs five bucks to repair her mine. So she's going to let it go and let's see, do I want to create another plutonium or do I want to create a uranium? Now out on the board right now, there's two plutonium bombs and a uranium bomb. So right now there's a higher need for plutonium. So I will take another plutonium. Yeah, okay. That's the end of my turn. I've done my one on the board. I've done all I can do on mine. Now it's Jen's turn again. She's only got one worker left. Even if her mine wasn't destroyed, she couldn't send it here because it takes two workers to go to that mine. So she could send this scientist and pay five bucks to get the mines repaired, which is a bad use of the scientist because the scientist can do other stuff. Like sending a scientist over here lets her get three bucks. And you know, I think maybe she'll do that. I think she will. I think she's going to send over to the factory. There's several things you can do in the factory. You can send, you can see there's no restriction on any of these spaces. So you can send over here, I could, she, she, her, she could send her scientists here or here to basically get two fighters or two bombers. And you know, so the, you know, we could continue the air superiority war by, um, you know, getting more fighters. She could send her scientists over here where she would have to pay three yellow, uh, yellow cake to get five bucks. That's not a particularly good return. She could send him here to get five bucks, but then I would get two bucks. But since he's a scientist, she can send him over here and get three bucks. So Jen's just gonna come here and get three bucks because she's gonna have to pay a lot of money to fix her mind. So she got three bucks and I didn't get anything. And now, you, oh, sorry, you'll notice there's these little things here. That means a bribe. Every time you do an action that has one of these dollar sign symbols, a bribe is created. We take a dollar, not Jen doesn't do it. We take a dollar from the, from the bank and put it over here in the bribery cup. The other way bribes get added up, if, you know, if we buy over these really expensive buildings, which will happen later in the game, the 10, 12, or 10, 14, and 20 dollar buildings, bribes get created as well. Okay, so she's created a bribe. That was the end of her turn. She had nobody else she could place. I've still got three guys to place. And let's see, I can't do any on my board, but you know what? I think I want some more buildings. So I'm gonna come over here and do some building. And what the th there's this bribe now. This bribe is to encourage somebody to take the level, you know, the cheapest, the cheapest building. Normally it would cost two or free if I had an engineer. I don't have an engineer. Jen's been blocking the engineer and I don't want to pay three bucks to train an engineer. So normally this mine would cost two bucks. But if I take it now, it's only going to cost me one because I get the bribe. And you know, over time, there might be something really crappy here nobody wants, but over time the bribes start to build up and then eventually, okay, I gotta take that. There's just so much of a bribe. But you know what, I'm just happy, I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm happy with the mine anyway, I'm gonna take it. And it would cost me two, but since I get this bribe, it really only costs me one. And then of course again, everything slides down, new thing comes out, upside down. And remember, I, it's, it's still my turn, I've done my one big action board, I will now send one of my workers over to this mine because it can take one of any type, and I'll get some more yellow cake. And remember, you need yellow cake to convert it into plutonium or uranium, and you need those for the bombs. 
And that was my turn. Okay, now it's Jen's turn. She is out of workers. There's nothing else. It's time for her to call stuff back. Now her callback is a little bit different because she used some of these dummy workers. And the way that works is all of her workers and any dummy workers, I'm sorry, not dummy workers, any, um, what do you call them, the contractors, any of the gray workers, whether I place them or, not, or Jen place them, any gray workers up here would be re recalled right now. But there aren't any. Um, over here, Jen recalls this guy, and she also recalls these gray guys off of her card so she can use them again. And these go back waiting to be hired because they were just contractors, temporary contractors. However, the gray bl guy blocking my factory does not get pulled out. Jen has put this permanent blocker on, on, on my building until I retrieve workers later on. So that's always a really clever thing. When you're doing espionage, either with the Soviet Union power or under normal circumstances by using this ability, if you can, send over temp workers because they will take up space longer. So anyway, so that was Jen's whole turn, which is calling her workforce back. Oh, and again, as an expansion thing, whenever you call your workforce back, you get to get a free um, worker or you know, a free special uh, person. Let's see, and who does Jen want? She's already got espionage, but she can take this guy and this lets her do two espionages. Because, you know, once each turn perform an espionage on a single building and do not gain a spy level. So she could be the super espionage queen, but the problem with it is all my buildings are taken. So she wouldn't be able to actually jump in anymore. But she knows I only have one worker left. So I'm not going to be able to keep, do, I'm going to have to clear them out pretty soon. And then Jen could jump in with espionage. Sure, yeah, yeah. but you know what? No, I think instead she's going to take the mili- Is she? Hmm, the military guy? Yeah, okay. She's going to take the military guy, um, who basically increases her military options later. Uh, you know, we basically, basically have an escalating military situation now because Jen's taken that. Okay, so that was her whole turn, was retrieving and getting one of these special powers. Back to me, back to my turn. I've got one worker left. All my buildings are filled up down here. And so where am I going to send this guy? No, I see. You know what? Actually, I'm inclined to do. I could send him to this university. Now that Jen just pulled out, and finally, finally, I can get an engineer, hooray! And now, hey, I've got this guy, I can place him immediately, but unfortunately, all my buildings are filled up, so I can't. All right, so that was the end of my turn. Jen's turn, she's ready to go again. This guy, Curtis LeMay, and there's a historical background, you know, he was a Air, an American Air Force general and stuff like that. But anyway, his special power is every turn, you get to one fighter and one bomber for free, and often perform one airstrike, do these, in any order. So she, her fighter goes up and her bomber goes up. And now if she wanted, she could do an airstrike and you know, block my guys out. And I think she will, but she's only going to do an airstrike. She's going to send her fighter over. Oh no, she's not. I was going to say, she's going to send her fighter over to destroy my fighter. Uh, but she doesn't need to because I don't have any fighters. I don't have any defense at all. She, there's no reason for her to send her fighters over because there's nobody to hit. She could send her bomber over now and do two points of damage to one of my buildings, even though they're occupied, and you know, then it would take a while for me to repair it. She's not going to do it, though. She took this guy not to actually attack me, but just to maintain air superiority. Now that she, you know, she has more planes than me, I know that if I ever start trying to build up an air force, she could smack me down really quick. She doesn't want to attack me. This is just, you know, what, what was the old Cold War thing? Um, oh, I forget, you know, might through, uh, I forget all the, you know, better dead than red propaganda from the Cold War. But, you know, she is maintaining tactical superiority, uh, a peace through war, whatever it is, you know, the escalation thing. So. She basically got these, and she'll get more over time. As long as she keeps this guy, she'll just keep building a stronger and stronger Air Force. And will she use it? Well, we'll never know. But in the meantime, that was an automatic thing from this expansion ability, but she's gonna start placing guys. So she's got this engineer. I believe she is gonna get another building. She's gonna come over there. And remember, this engineer can get this one or this one for free. I believe she's gonna take this university where she can now start training her own engineers and not have to rely on the main university. So that comes over here, and it was free because she sent an engineer, and now she will immediately use it by sending this guy there and hiring an engineer. And while she's at it, she'll send another guy here and get another scientist. So she is building up her, you know, she's got her university, she's building up her specialized workforce very, very quickly. And if she could, she could um, send two guys to the mine, but she can't because it's damaged. And she's not really gonna use her, uh, her espionage because there's nothing for me to grab. 
Nothing but Roberta Graff. That's the end, of course, everything slides down again. La, la, la. Okay. Now it's my turn. And what am I going to do with this engineer? Oh. Yeah, okay. I'm going to send my engineer up here. I'm going to get a building for free. A ura mm. Do I want to? See, this uranium plant allows me to trade in a scientist and two yellow cake and two dollars for uranium. Which is, you know, basically a little bit better than what I get on the board. On the board, it's three dollars a scientist to, to get uranium. So it's a slightly better one. But remember, I can get a uranium and or plutonium through my threatening the world. But still, I need uranium too. Or do I want a factory where I can make some money and, and or fighters and, you know, try to fight Jen's air superiority? Or do I want this engineer to do something else? Oh, and now we're really getting into the, the nitty gritty. I mean, I could send this engineer over here and get to yellow cake, which, you know, I, I need to, to, you know, fuel my ability to get more fissionable materials. I could send him over here just to get, oh, I'm sorry, or no, I couldn't. Yeah, that's the main thing I could do. No, I'm going to come over here. Oh, what the heck, I'll get this for free because it's an engineer. And unfortunately, I can't use this because all my guys are used up. I don't have any scientists. I don't have anybody else. So pretty much my turn is over. Now instead, maybe, it, actually, you know what? Actually, I think I will do slightly different. I will. It's a bit wasteful. I'm going to send my engineer down here to get three dummy workers like Jen did last time. And I'm going to send one of them up here, and that means he got the factory, but it cost me three bucks. But I had the money for it. And now, with my two extra guys, I could turn this guy, you know, tra him over here, to train him to be a scientist. Or not train him, but to hire a scientist. Now I've got a scientist, and now I will send my scientist that I just got, and two dollars, and two yellow cake, all to get, oops, my uh, up here, my first uranium. So now I'm on the uranium track as well. And I still got one guy left over, so I could place him over here. But you know, there's I'm I'm, I'm pretty much at my wit's end. There's nothing more I can do with him. So that's the end of my turn. Back to Jen's turn. First star off the bat. As long as she got this, guys, her military might continues to rise. She could attack. She could hit me really hard, but she's saving it up. And there's actually, I should say, the, the only use for fighters is taking out enemy aircraft. So if I ever start building up a, you know, an air force, she could destroy it very quickly. There's a different use for bombers. You can use bombers to destroy your opponent's buildings or you know, damage them, as Jens is. Or you can use them to, what do you call it, uh, to load bombs and score extra points at the end of the game. Uh, but I'll, I'll, demonstrate, I'll have to demonstrate that in the extended because I'm running long on this. And I, let's see. So, so she's got her more firepower. Her mine is still blocked. She still can't use it. I think her main action on the board is going to be to send... Hmm. Uh, yeah, well, she'll send a worker up here to repair. And that costs her five bucks. And she gets three repair points. So if she had multiple things or multiple damage, she could get up to, up, up to three of them. Also, everybody else in the game now gets a free repair action. Their first repair costs two, the second one costs three additional, and the third one costs five. So everybody else can repair up to three points as well for ten bucks. I don't have anything damaged though, so I don't need to repair. So, Jen has now repaired. It's a bit over her cost, um, but she repaired that. And now, that was her main board action. She'll send the... Yeah. She'll send her engineer and her guy over here and make two more yellow cake. And that was her turn. Now I've got one guy left. And I really should use him. I only have two bucks left as well. I think I'm running really low on cash. And I really want to get some more buildings. So I'm going to send him up to the factories to get some. And I'm not going to go to this one. Jen's already taken the, the best one. I'm not going to take this one because it would cost me three. I'm going to take this one, which gives me five bucks but also gives Jen two bucks, which I don't like because she's loaded. And because this is this space, another bribe appears. And that was my turn. Now it's Jen's turn again. Once again, she's held on to this guy for quite a while by, you know, by uh, drag out. So that's one of the nice things. You can hold on, the, the, you know, you sometimes, you a lot of time in the game, you just use all your workers all at once in one big super move and then you retrieve them. But with the expansion, you want to hold on to these guys for a while. So sometimes you do smaller moves than you would do in the base game. So that's actually kind of cool. Anyway though, so she's got one more worker as a scientist. Can't do espionage with just one guy. And I think, and she's loaded. Let's see. 
She could send her scientists over here and start getting some plutonium of her own. She could send them up here and just, you know, buy a building. And that building's really nice. That's two uranium. That's actually pretty cool. Or she could come over here. Well, she could come over here to train more, but it'll cost a few bucks. And she's got a lot of her own training ability. She's not going to do that. She is going to come down here and use a scientist, give up two yellow cake, and that gives her her first plutonium. Okay. And that was the end of her turn. And that was all her items. So next turn, she is going to have to give up General LeMay. Back to my turn, though. I have to give everything up now because I'm all done. So finally, I will have gotten this gray guy out of my factory. And these guys come up. The gray guy up here goes away. This guy comes out. This guy comes out. And as you can see, I've got a sizable workforce that I'll start my next turn. I also have to give up. Oh my god, I totally forgot. I could have been using, I could have been using him to use different engineer actions. Every time I used a little grunt, like, oh, that's right. Like, I remember I sent a grunt up here to get this building, but this guy let me turn that grunt into an engineer. So I have three more bucks. Gosh darn it. Always remember to use your special powers. All right, well, I probably was stupid in other ways too. I'll put notes where I goofed up in the video, but at the very least, I'll get that three bucks because this guy, when I sent him to get the building, I had turned him into an engineer with this power. Ugh. So he's got to go back, and now I've got to get another guy. And I think, yes, I'm going to get the espionage guy. Jen's hitting me with espionage. I'm going to hit her right back. Okay. And now it's Jen's turn. So she's got to recall all of her guys. I'm going to send this guy back. Oops. I forgot to take this gray guy out of the board and these two guys as well. All these gray guys come out. Okay. Jen's got her bigger workforce. She takes a new guy. And now, since I took this guy who's going to give me one espionage of my choice every single turn and you know, hit her buildings and you know, block them, she's going to take John Lansdale Jr., who will, all buildings are immune to espionage. So basically, we now have a, uh, a ceasefire on espionage. Well, Jen can still espionage me, but I can't espionage her. So basically, we both take in workers who cancel each other out, or you know, the, the special guys. So anyway, so Jen's taking the guy. Now it's my turn. I was going to espionage. I can't. But I'm going to show you one more thing before, uh, before we go to the extended. I am going to start by doing the design bomb. It's the only one I think I haven't done. I've been to all the other actions. And to come here, you have to send a scientist plus an engineer. So I'm sending a scientist plus an engineer. And that means these are, in a two-player game, there are three bombs out here. And I, uh, I get first and third pick of these three bombs, and Jen will get the second one. So, now remember, I, I definitely want a plutonium bomb, so I will take the compensator, because this one only needs three plutonium, and it needs five workers, where the other one's much harder to do, it needs six workers. Okay, so I've got this. It's a closed hand. Everybody knows I took a plutonium bomb, but nobody knows exactly which ones I've got. And you can see at the end of the game, it's either worth 13 points or 26 points. How does that work? Watch the extended video. Okay. Jen now gets her first choice. So she can take the, the uh, uranium bomb or the fusion. Since she's already started getting some plutonium, she's going to take the plutonium bomb of her own. And so then I get the last one. Okay. Now, instead of taking... Or the, I had to take the last one. But either Jen or I, if we wanted to, instead of taking the first or second one, we could have discarded it and taken one of these H-bombs instead. But I'll talk about that in the extended video too. That's a new thing that's in the expansion. A new, the H-bombs are a new element. Okay. So anyway, I did that action. And now I get to do as many actions as I want down here. And I'm going to do all my actions before Jen can espionage them. Okay. So I am definitely going to send a grunt to my factory and a grunt to my mine and a scientist. With, oh no, I have no yellow cake. Oh, I can't send him to do that. So I'm just going to send a factory, and I could get a bomber, but I'm going to take the two bucks because I need money, and I'm going to get another yellow cake, which means I've got one yellow cake, but I need two yellow cake to be able to come here, so I couldn't do that action. That was my whole turn. i got three more workers. Jen's turn. Look at all these workers. She could do espionage now to get into my enrichment plant, but unfortunately, she only has one yellow cake as well. How does she solve that problem? Send... All right, well, yeah, it's going to be easy for her. First of all, what's she going to do up on the big board? She wanted another building. There's factories. There's a, enrichment, a, a better enrichment plant. She's not going to bomb yet. She's still, or bombing. She's still thinking about that. I think. Yeah, she's got so much money. She can afford to do it. Oh, but there's a bribe over here. She could just take this factory for free. Or not for free, for half, for, well, she could get it for free. Actually, yeah, she's going to send her engineer. She's going to get this factory for free. 
because she's an engineer, and she'll get one dollar. So she actually got paid to take that, thanks to the bribe. Okay. But now that was her main board action, but now let's watch her do her evil personal boards. First of all, she's gonna send two guys over here to this mine. And that's gonna give her two yellow cake. And you know where she's going now. She's gonna send her other two grunts to her main country action, which means she espionages, which means she uses one of mine. So she's gonna send one of her purple scientists. She's gonna spend two yellow cake and two bucks. And that means she used my enrichment plant to increase her own uranium count, or uranium, or, uh, uranium count, and now my building is blocked because I couldn't get to it in time. Let's see, and, and, and she's not done yet. She, well, let's see, okay. she'll send her scientists over to this university, and she'll send this engineer over to, I mean, she could have sent anybody, but she'll get herself another scientist and another engineer. And what the heck, just to be thorough and efficient, she'll send this last scientist over to this factory and she'll do an output and she will get $2. And now she's placed everything in one turn. She did one big mega turn. She did all this stuff, she did that up there, she did it up there, and, you, and with that, you can start to see what is very, very cool about this game. As you get more and more workers and you get more and more buildings, you have these turns where you do these big epic mega turns, but it's all about timing because if, if you pass first, you open yourself up to espionage, etc., etc. But okay, I've gone much longer than I thought I did. I'm going to stop right there. If you want to see some more, if you want to see us actually building some bombs and maybe a little bit about these H bombs as part of the, uh, what do you call it, the expansion, watch the extended button with the button that's on screen right now. Watch the extended video from the button on screen. Or alternatively, you can hit final thoughts. Your choice in five, four, three, two, one. Thanks, everybody.